Uh, the city of Astoria is unique in regard to its watershed because we're one of the only municipalities that owns their entire watershed. And it's 3,700 acres, it's substantial in size, and it gives us complete control of managing it. This is our, our source of drinking water for the entire city of 10,000 people, in addition to about 3,000 uh, people that are outlying water districts that we wholesale water to. There's a lot of carbon here. It, to a large extent, regenerated naturally. So we have a really high diversity of species. We have a really complex forest. And for the most part, we have a really old forest. But it's really unique that it hasn't been heavily harvested and it's been managed for a different set of values and goals. When they were considering doing a carbon project on this property, the initial assessment was actually a inventory that was required for our Forest Stewardship Council certification. And so they did a much more detailed inventory that allowed them then to develop a carbon project and really helped them realize the potential of what was here at that point. With a future that is likely to be far more extreme in terms of weather events, that this watershed is able to weather those and is able to continue to provide high quality drinking water to the city of Astoria in the required quantities. And so all of our management is really focused on that and carbon fits perfectly with that. The partnership, I think, was originally driven by the previous forester who commissioned that inventory and then brought together the partners. So LNC Carbon was developing expertise and had developed a lot of expertise around carbon project development at that point. So the way they manage is they make a determination based on their values and objectives that they're going to manage their land and grow more timber than they're going to harvest over some period of time. And in most carbon projects, that time frame is at least 40 years into the future. Carbon can offer another layer of return on your investment of, of forest management. Just as timber, or in the case of the story watershed, water, carbon has a value, a commodity value, and you can manage your asset in a way that, that maximizes all the different values that you have on your property, carbon being one of those. The objective is to, to actively manage the forest land, but manage it a little bit differently than what uh, maybe a traditional forest landowner might manage it with only looking at one commodity, which is the timber value. In this case, we're looking at multiple values. We're looking at water, timber, and carbon. And then how do you manage those together to optimize the value uh, from your property? When the city of Astoria decided to do this project, there were some competing interests. There was some interest both in the city council and in the public that wanted to see more harvest occur on this watershed because there's a lot of value here. There was also interest saying we shouldn't harvest any trees uh, on this because it's a municipal watershed. And so adding carbon into the mix offers, you know, a nice place in the middle where you can do some harvesting that helps maintain forest health and improve resiliency. And then you can also generate some carbon revenue and it helps the city achieve their broad objectives. There's a growing demand in the marketplace from large multinational corporations that are looking for a net zero footprint. They can do that in two ways. They can re reduce uh, some of their releases of carbon by using fuel efficient vehicles or, or uh, you know, changing how they operate. And then they can also offset some of their footprint by buying carbon credits. Forest happen to be uh, a really good place because not only can we pull carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, put it into trees, store it there, but we also can harvest trees in a sustainable way and then we can convert those to wood products that then continue to store carbon over the long term. In the case of the city of Astoria, they're expanding the age class of these trees well above what the common practice might be of similar landowners. And we're able to measure that because we know what the common practice is and we know what our stocks are based on our project activity. And then we can measure the difference. And that equates to how much carbon can be sold into the marketplace that corporations or other businesses can use to offset their emissions footprint. Having greater diversity and complexity can help us kind of weather, that we could still have a drinking watershed in 100 years, and our goal is to be able to provide higher quality, more reliable quantities of water over a very long planning horizon. And really thinking out to what does it look like seven generations from now is sort of the benchmark used within the um, consulting industry to think through what are the implications of our decisions on future generations.
This can be applied to other watersheds across Oregon as well as across uh, the country. We're still early days, but it's these kinds of examples uh, I think that will help answer questions and, and spur more interest in how can carbon play an important element in their land management.